name is Elizabeth Swenson. And I'm Sean Bouchard. And we're here to give some extra tips and tricks uh, while you're designing your games and looking forward to the writing rules milestone. So for those of you who maybe haven't done board game design before or tabletop design, writing rules can be uh, an obstacle. It can be pretty hard. It's super important though because you typically don't come in the box or in the booklet. Uh, writing rules is a form of technical writing and we don't get to practice technical writing very often so it's important to uh, take a moment and think about what the game would be like for someone trying it for the first time. You've had a chance to play your game a hundred times, well maybe not a hundred, but you've at least played it ten times I bet. Uh, and in doing that you begin to build up a library of strategies and things you know about the game but the first person to get that your box doesn't have any of that and so you have to sort of empathize with a novice uh, in your experience. If you're not used to writing instructions, then it's really amazing how many assumptions you make about the game because you know it well mm -hmm. that other people aren't going to be able to make. So some tips for, uh, for how you can do this is to look at other games, look at published games that you really like, uh, and look at how they present their rules. Um, try to get a sense of what they do well and, and what they don't do well. Uh, think about, for example, when you're, um, when you're playing the game for the first time, what are things that you have to go back and reread in the rule book in order to understand because it didn't click the first time around? Uh, or take your favorite game that you've taught to other people. Think about how was it that you organized that? How did you present the rules of the game when you, uh, you know, first taught it to somebody else? Um, keep in mind though that the, the instructions for published games aren't necessarily great. Some of them are actually pretty bad. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. Look for the strengths and weaknesses of the game that you're looking at. Um, and then of course the only way that you can know that your instructions are really working is to, to play test them. Um, so that's something that you can do obviously while you're play testing your game. Uh, you can um, present the, the rules to the game uh, in the instruction in that form and have players sort of try to figure out how to play. Um, but you can also do more than that. You can also uh, like email your instructions to a friend. Um, and have them just try to uh, explain back to you how the game is played. Uh, they don't actually have to play it, they can just sort of talk through it. Pay attention to the things that they miss or that they misunderstand, obviously, uh, but also look for, for places where they reorder information because taking those kinds of notes can help you uh, improve your instructions later by reorganizing information yourself. Mm -hmm. So Sean and I have made a number of mistakes ourselves when we're designing rules for physical games especially, uh, but in doing so, in making all those stumbles, we've also come up with some things that have helped us in the past. Uh, one of those is to think about the tone that your rules set. Uh, can you make the rules fit within the world of your game uh, if your game has a strong uh, sense of uh, dramatic sort of staging or place? How can your rules be the first gateway to that experience and having the player step into the magic circle? Oftentimes, uh, game designers forget to put the objective and the player dynamics up front. People immediately want to know how do they win and who are they playing with or against. Don't leave it as for a surprise at the end of the rules. People will re misinterpret as they read forward. We also encourage people, uh, and when we're teaching our students, to <laughs> look, uh, make sure there's a diagram of setup. It's so important for there to be a diagram of setup when you're designing a paper game because it eliminates a key bit of player doubt. Even if you think you can write in text perfectly how to set up and begin your game, a picture will let them race forward and do so with confidence. There's nothing is a rule killer like ambiguity. In addition, think about where diagrams would be helpful other than just the setup. Where is an edge case in our example best depicted visually? If you don't have a very visually based game, examples of play and a scripted example of play with fake players can really help set the mood and give people a sense of the procedures of your game. Uh, also think about iconography. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can present rules on cards or on the board itself, uh, either in text or, or visually. Uh, and if you can come up with a system of symbols that represent different rules or reminders of what a card does, that can help a lot. Absolutely. I've seen so many games where there are only a few kinds of cards, so you're seeing the same cards over and over, and yet players still have to go back to the rulebook every time to figure out what, what does a frog do. 
when the rules for the frog are maybe only a sentence or two long, that if they were on the card themselves, people could just continue to play. Think about where you can strategically embed rules into either the visual design or literally as text onto any of your physical elements for those of you doing physical games. For those of you thinking about some multiplayer tablet games, think about where the rules could be present in the interface at key moments. Similarly, many games utilize player aids or think about how many versions of the instructions are in the box. What's most useful to get your game across for everyone to have their own bit of instruction or for something to be in front of me to remind me of the cost of various elements of my game. One more thing, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people uh, present a game and nowhere on the box or in the rules does it say how many players are, are supposed to play. That's obviously you know, the first thing that somebody needs to know when they want to play your game. Uh, so don't forget about that sort of thing either. Um, good luck writing your instructions for the next milestone this week. We love looking at the Ingadema website and reading about your blog, seeing how you're doing. Uh, so keep that up. Uh, hopefully we'll get to posting about our games soon. Have fun.